Hi everybody, it's David Porter. Before I get started, I must remove my delicious Moroccan mint air freshener. So it's not in the way. Okay, so what I wanna talk about today is, um, I wanna talk about muggers. Uh, first, what is a mugger? A mugger is not the same as a robber or a thief or a burglar. These are all different classifications of criminals who basically who steal, who take things that don't belong to them, uh, who did, were not paying attention in one of their trips through the first grade where you were taught if it doesn't belong to you, keep your hands off of it. Muggers are dangerous. A mugger is someone who will confront the victim directly and using either force or intimidation threat of force displaying a weapon uh, they will convince you to part with your money or other valuables now here is something very important to understand if you are a criminal trying to get money there are much easier ways to acquire money that do not involve direct confrontation of the victim and such high risk and such high criminal penalties. There are many alternatives available. When an offender chooses to mug, they're in one of two places, generally speaking. They are either utterly desperate, they have exhausted other methods of acquiring money, such as running scams or borrowing or stealing from friends or family. They have exhausted all of their income from any legitimate sources. They have, I'm gonna have to roll the windows up in the car because someone is using a leaf blower nearby, which is going to compete with the sound of my voice. So I have to, there we go, that's better. Um, muggers have, have, as I was saying, have exhausted all other legitimate means of acquiring money and typically the reason they need money is to fund uh, their addiction they have they have exhausted shoplifting and returning items for a refund they have exhausted uh, begging and pleading with family or friends for money they have exhausted uh, running scams um, you know, coming up to somebody in a public place in a, a laundromat with a uh, with a with some small electronic device or, or a watch or jewelry, whatever, and singing you the sob story that usually goes something like this: um, "Can you please help me? My car broke down, and I just need money for gas to get back home." And it's very often involves something to to see my children or to uh, to take care of my children they're typically going to throw something in about children whether they have them or not uh, this is a common scam and if you give fork over ten dollars for this whatever it is that they're offering you you've just purchased very likely purchased stolen property so when all of these avenues of acquiring um, money are exhausted a desperate offender is going to resort to mugging, the direct confrontation of a victim. Or they are very sociopathic. The leaf blower stopped. It's time to roll the windows back down again. Let some air in. Or they are sociopaths who enjoy directly confronting a victim. They enjoy the power inherent with pointing a weapon at someone or violently laying hands upon someone and seeing the fear and the disbelief in their eyes. So here are some things to consider. Uh, first, awareness and avoidance and prevention are much better strategies uh, for deal are the best strategies for dealing with mongers. What does that mean? It means do not be in the same place at the same time where the muggers are going to be. It means do not look like a good victim. And I have described victim behaviors in other videos on this channel. 
muggers will watch people very carefully and they will allow one they will allow 99 people to walk right past them and they will be watching them and scrutinizing them and they will not engage then number 100 is going to walk by and they're going to look at this person this man or woman they're going to say there's my target and some of these people some of these guys who mug they may not have anything like formal education they may not be very intelligent as far as being book smart but that doesn't mean they're dumb because they tend to be very intuitive and I've said this before in other places um, career criminals habitual criminals antisocials are going to be better at reading people than most psychologists will they are going to watch the way you dress, the way you walk, the expression on your face, um, whether you're aware of your surroundings or are you busy talking into a, into a handheld device? Uh, do you look afraid or timid or anxious or nervous or hesitant? Are you obviously from out of town? You know, are you in a major city and you're busy looking at the skyscrapers because you've never seen buildings higher than three stories, uh, you are going to mark yourself as a good target. Never look like a good target. That's the first step. Or the second step. The, the first step is, like I said, don't be where the muggers are going to be at the same time. In other words, do not walk alone at night. If for some reason you must walk at night don't be alone a mugger is going to be deterred by a group of people because at the very least you're going to have witnesses you're going to have too many people to control you're going to have someone who could call 911 uh, it's going to get complicated uh, if a mugger confronts three people and two of them run it, it it's going to make things unnecessarily complicated they prefer solitary targets generally speaking you are going to um, you're, you're going to be a good target if people know you what does that mean it means you are already involved in the drug trade you are you are active as far as buying drugs or selling drugs you are going to be more likely to be, be a victim if you have connections to the street what does that mean you're homeless homeless people are victimized by other homeless people the severely chronically mentally ill who may also be homeless are at great risk for being victimized um, by by offenders or being used by offenders you are more likely to be a victim if you have a big mouth if you are rude if you are disrespectful especially to strangers if other people who are involved in the criminal life know you and you have not been fair and reasonable in your dealings with them if you have been disrespectful or threatening they are not ever going to forget it uh, they are going to be very big on taking vengeance whether it's the next day or six months down the road or a year down the road or even longer because uh, on the street reputation is everything you have you cannot ever look weak or incapable or hesitant if someone offends you or slights you or robs you you must take vengeance it doesn't have to be immediately but it's got to happen at some point or your reputation will suffer and you are going to be at risk of increased victimization now clearly do not lead this kind of lifestyle you decrease your chance of being come of becoming a victim of mugging if you are already in the life you got to find do one thing you got to find the exit you got to find the way out and I'm fully aware this is far more complicated than that sounds. Maybe I'll make a video on that topic at another time. So here is the consensus from the many, many personal security experts that I have either read or emailed or and you know email corresponded with or spoke to in person. If someone ever points a gun or a knife at you and asks you for your money, your jewelry, your watch give it to them. I have never heard a single expert 
say anything other than that. Your chances of prevailing, if someone is pointing a loaded firearm at you, are so low, it is just not worth it. The experts that I have communicated with have said unanimously, the only time you will ever try to take a gun away from someone is if you have complied with their demands and they're still intent on shooting you. Because at that point, they've decided to shoot you, you have nothing to lose, and if you can make a move to disarm them or get away, you do it. But otherwise, you comply. You hand over your cash, you hand over your watch, you hand over your rings, your necklace, you hand over your car keys. Give it up. It's just stuff. Make sure that you are alive and well to go to work the next day, earn more money so you can buy more stuff. You cannot do that if you are dead or wounded. Um, the, other, the other thing is don't be a smart ass. Don't mouth off. Don't insult them. Don't challenge them. Don't threaten them. 99 times out of 100, if you give up your valuables, the person mugging you is going to go away because they are there to rob you. They are not there to kill you or otherwise harm you unless you give them a reason to. Do not give them any reason. Okay. I think that... It, well, it does, definitely does not cover the topic. Rather, it is a very brief introduction to a very complex topic. And I have included some sources for further reading. Uh, take a look at some of these sources, and um, it's going to give you some good information. But please remember that videos and articles and books are very good. They are not a substitute for live training. Okay, I want to thank you for watching. Everyone, please hit subscribe and be safe.